a pretty little scene at 79 Westville Vista. Molly is sitting by the window darning socks. And Fibber, that human dynamo of flashing energy, is trying to reach a newspaper lying on the floor without getting out of his easy chair. Aha! He makes it! <laughs> and that, friends, is the picture we present tonight of Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Congratulations, McGee. On what? Reaching the paper without getting out of that chair. <laughs> I guess you never heard it's good for you to stretch, Molly. That's what makes cats so healthy. They're always stretching. Oh. Well, turtles live longer and they don't stretch. <laughs> you know why turtles live so long? Why, Mr. Bones? <laughs> On account of they got a thick shell they can duck back under if they see they've stuck their neck out too far. <laughs> Heavenly days, McGee. How do you wear your socks out so fast? Look at them. Oh, well, they got to wear out sometime. Socks ain't immortal. <laughs> no, I suppose not. Well, what's in the paper, McGee? Huh? I said, what's the news in the paper? Uh, I don't know, Molly. What do you mean you don't know, Kent? Why, McGee, what's the matter, darling? Why do you look like that? There, there, there's something the matter with me, Molly. The, the, the type is all blurry. Oh. I can't make head nor tail of it. It, it all runs together. Well, uh, maybe you need glasses, dearie. Oh. You been having any headaches lately? No. Well, yes, I have. I, I had a terrible one the morning after that party at the Elks Club. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but that wasn't from any lack of glasses. <laughs> downtown and see a good optimist. You mean optometrist. I mean oculus. <laughs> Maybe you mean optician. I mean a man who examines you for glasses, ignorant. <laughs> I don't want to wear glasses, Molly. This is just a temporary condition. Oh, yeah? That's what my grandfather said when people stopped buying his buggy grips. <laughs> you know what you got? No. You got a pigmatism. <laughs> you really think I have? The pigmatism is pretty bad, ain't it? Why, why, well, uh, why, it's terrible. <laughs> Get your hat now. You're going downtown for some glass. Oh, Molly, let's wait a while. My eyes is all right if I rest them. Now, come on, dearie. You worry me. Oh, shucks. Sure. Besides, you look real distinguished in spectacles. Say, I bet I will at that. I'll get me a pair of the pinched nose kind with a black ribbon. Uh, people will probably think I'm a banker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you get them with blinkers on so they'll think you're a horse, but get them. <laughs> I wonder how you locate a good eye doctor. I'll ask information on the telephone. Hello, operator. Say, who's the best eye doctor? Oh, is that you, Mert? <laughs> Mert, Molly. Get to the point, gossip. <laughs> Hello, Mert. Say, you know a good eye doctor in town? Who? Oh, Dr. Gildersleeve, eh? Where's his office? 14th and Oak. Well, thanks, Mert. How's everything with you? What? Your cousin? What? Oh, that's terrible. Oh, my. Where did it happen, Mert? What? Oh, Princeton, eh? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He was a nice guy, too. Oh, my. Well, well, don't take it too hard, Mert. Oh. And thanks for the information. So long, Mert. What was that, McGee? She lost her cousin in an accident. Oh, dear. He was a college student. Oh, what happened? He got swallowed by a goldfish. <laughs> It's bound to happen, folks, either on this program or some other one. And we promise we'll have no more goldfish jokes, folks. Yep. We hereby sign the guppy pledge. <laughs> Hello there, Johnny. Hello, daughter. Want your pictures cooked, setting on a pony? <laughs> no, we don't. Me? She says, no, we don't, old-timer. We don't like them trick pictures. Not since somebody's seen our wedding picture with me sitting down and Molly's hand on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> and they tried to book us for a ventriloquist act. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, kid. But that ain't the way I hear it. No. <laughs> the way I hear it, one fur says to the other fella, see. <laughs> I can't go to Kentucky Derby next week. Lost too much money on the horse last year. That too, says Tully Fark. Was he a favorite in the winter book? Must have been, says the first fella. He ran like he had snowshoes on. <laughs> that always makes me stop and think, youngsters, when I see a three-year-old horse make a chump out of a 40-year-old man. <laughs> Old 
duffer's got something there, Molly. That's the way it is with all the horses I ever bet on. If they see it's going to be a photo finish, they stop and pose. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? I says they'd stop and pose. Uh, that ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> Just I rather like it. <laughs> Say, listen, are you going to go down and buy you some glasses? Are you going to neglect your eyes? No, no, I'm, I'm going right away. But don't take it so serious, Molly. My eyes ain't really bad. Oh, no? No. Well, then take my sewing basket off your head and put your hat on. <laughs> I thought that brim seemed kind of narrow. Oh, hi, Billy. Oh, I was just leaving. Well, can't you wait a few minutes? I know is going to sing my reverie. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Oh, I'd love to hear it, Mr. Mills. McGee's got to run down and get him a pair of glasses. Yeah. Glasses? Yeah, I got a pigmatism or, or something. Really. <laughs> Must have strained my eyes. I was afraid that would happen. The type of those old joke books is terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, let me tell Oh, you. his eyes aren't awfully bad, Billy. Well, his eyes aren't too good. You know what happened to him on the train going to California? No, what was that? Well, he had his smoke glasses on, and when he passed the mirror, he mistook himself for the porter and tipped himself three dollars. <laughs> I never done no such a thing. Why, of course you didn't, dearie. No. Not three dollars. <laughs> now, you run along whilst I listen to Mr. Nova sing my reverence. All right. Well, see you later, Molly. So long, Billy. Take it, Don. <laughs> Hi, sis. I'm Mr. McGee. Is Dr. Gildersleeve in? Yes, sir. With reference to what did you wish to see him about, sir? <laughs> He's I, Dr. Annie. Yes, sir. Well, what do you think I want to see him about? Raising petunias? Just a minute, sir. Hello, doctor. I'm Mr. McGee. Is he to see you about raising petunias? I am not. You're not what, sir? A petunia. I mean, I didn't... Dad read it. It's about my eye. Oh, correction, doctor. He's changed his mind about the petunias. Now it's his eyes. Yes, doctor. Will you have a chair, sir? The doctor will see you very shortly. Thanks. Move over a little, will you, bud? Thanks. Oh, that's okay, buddy. Which doctor are you waiting to see? Oh, none of them. They just hire me to sit here so it'll look like a busy joint, see. <laughs> well, say, you know anything about this Dr. Gildersleeve? He's a pretty good eye man, ain't he? Oh, he's wonderful. Mm -hmm. He treated me uncle for 15 years. That's all. So. Me uncle kept bumping into things, chairs and tables and stuff. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even walk downstairs alone. Oh, okay. What did Doc find wrong with him? Nearsighted? No. Drunk. <laughs> For 15 years, huh? That was a snappy diagnosis. Good thing your uncle didn't have the seven-year itch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, what's your trouble, buddy? I don't know. A touch of a pigmatism, I think. Ah, uh, you don't mean a pigmatism. You mean a stigmatism. <laughs> That's what I said. It's a prismatism. Yeah. Hey, uh, nurse. Yes, sir. Uh, can the doc do anything about black eyes? Oh, yes, sir. We can fix them right up, sir. That's well. My girl's got black eyes, and I like blue ones better. I'll send her in. <laughs> guy. I suppose he'll be back for an eye wash because his girl gave him a dirty look. <laughs> hey, what you laughing at, mister? Oh, hello there, little girl. Hi. <laughs> Are you waiting to see the doctor, too? Sure. Nothing serious, I hope. Sure. Sure what? Hmm? I oh, skip it. <laughs> There's something wrong with your eyes? I hope you ain't been reading in bed too much. Oh, you mean stories like Mother Goose and Jack and the Beanstalk and Little Red Riding Hood? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> well, then what is the matter with your eyes? Oh, I bet you there's nothing the matter with them, I bet you. Well, then what you waiting to see the doctor for? Well, gee, mister, I... Hmm? Oh. <laughs> just, just let it go, sis. Sure. Hey, mister, you know what? No, what? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> I says, no, what? I got a turtle and a chicken and a puppy and a kitty. And when the doctor comes out, I'm going to have a duck, too, I bet you. <laughs> you are, huh? <laughs> well, is the doctor going to give you a duck? No, but I'm going to wait till he lays an egg. <laughs> the duck? No, the doctor. My papa says he's just an old quack. <laughs>
hope this doc ain't a quack. Hey, nurse. Yes, sir. What's Doc Gildersleeve's first name? Donald. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm afraid of that. I don't seem to be able to... I tell you, doctor, I feel like a new woman. And to think I never thought of that treatment myself. Thank you so much, Dr. Wilcox. Dr. Wilcox? That's quite all right, Mrs. Jones. And remember, no heavy housework. You'll keep on using the Johnson's Glow Coat I prescribed for your floors and linoleum. Just pour out a little and spread it around with a long-handled applier, and I promise you, you'll never have that backache again. It's a marvelous treatment. My floors look simply wonderful. And Johnson's Glow Coat keeps floors from wearing out, too, doesn't it, Doctor? Yes, indeed, Mrs. Jones. But we're just as much interested in keeping floors from wearing out people as we are to keep people from wearing out floors. Ah, listen to that guy, will you? When he was a bouncing baby, they didn't know he'd grow up into a medicine ball. <laughs> And another thing, Mrs. Jones. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Mrs. Jones, you've been worrying too much about your budget. I'd suggest you get some of those special giant-sized cans of Johnson's Wax or Glow Coat with the extra third free before they're all gone. Oh, thank you, Dr. Wilcox. Don't mention it, Mrs. Jones. <laughs> hey, Harpo. Oh, hello, Fibber. Hey, what is this? Thank you, Dr. Wilcox. Don't mention it, Mrs. Jones. <laughs> Sounds like Gallagher and Sheen in an ambulance. <laughs> when did you get to be a doctor? Oh, I'm not a regular doctor, but I run a floor clinic in this building. Dr. Wilcox, Ph.D. Ph.D.? Oh, doctor of philosophy. No, perfect housekeeping department. <laughs> well, excuse me now, pal. I've got several patients waiting. <laughs> that guy's in a different job every week. He sold glow coats so long, he just can't help spreading himself around. <laughs> yes, come back again next week, Mrs. Weedledeck, and I'll fit you for glasses. Oh! <laughs> What's the matter, Grandma? You ain't too vain to wear spectacles, are you? No, Shorty, but why should I wear them? I've seen everything. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be late for my parents. You've got woo! Well, merry old soul, but a little run down. <laughs> You ready to see me, Doc? I'm in a kind of a hurry. Oh, I certainly. Come in, Mr. McGee. Okay, bud. Now then, uh, just what seems to be the trouble? Well, I got a pigmatism or something. I tried to read a newspaper this morning, and, and the type got all blurry and run together. Is that so? Probably a slight conjunctivitis of the inferior corona. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, close your eyes tight. Okay. You see anything? No. Nope. Very interesting. <laughs> Uh, any history of eye trouble in your family? Only my cousin Sanford. Blondes made him wink. Hey, bless <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Well-known disease. We call it peroxidus flirtation. <laughs> One usually outgrows it, though. <laughs> now, just sit here a moment while I adjust the pupilometer. <clears throat> Steady now. Okay, bye. Oh, splendid. What is it? They turned on my current again. Somebody must have paid my light bill. <laughs> Now, while I hold my hand over your left eye, McGee, you read the top line on that chart over there. Uh, ready? Yep. Uh, what does it say? It says M-K-N-P-G-X-B-T. Very good. Now the other eye. Read the same line. M-K-N-P-G-X-B-T. Oh, boy, my eyes are worse than I thought. I read it twice and it still don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> now, try these spectacles on for size, McGee. That's it. How's that? Oh, say, these are wonderful, Doc. I can see just as plain. Is that so? <laughs> Those are just the frames. I haven't put the lenses in yet. <laughs> now, uh, uh, try these lenses, McGee. Left lens and right lens. Uh -huh. Now then. Better? Oh, great. How much I owe you, Doc? Uh, $25. And well worth it, too. Here you are. Thank you. Come in again next week, McGee, and we'll check your reaction. Okay, Doc. Boy, these are wonderful glasses. Why? I can see a guy out the window there, and why, it looks like I could just reach right out and touch him. Yeah, you can. That's the window washer. Yeah. <laughs> Good day, McGee. Start with the four notes singing the Basin Street Blues. Boy, are these spectacles wonderful. Probably changed my whole appearance, too. I bet nobody recognizes me in these news. Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? Oh, sure. <laughs> hey, lovely day, isn't it? Oh, hi, Eppy. Yes, it is now, but no, it looked kind of bad for a while when I thought my eyes was on the bum. I gotta wear these glasses. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I should wear them myself, you know. But I think it ages a girl, too, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you age a lot faster if you can't see where you're going, Eppy. <laughs> 
Besides, I seen you at the theater the other night with glasses. You had them on a little stick. Oh, yes, yes, my lawn yet. Oh, I see. What's the idea of the handle on them? <laughs> Your nose tender? <laughs> Please, Miss McGee, that is ridiculous. That's just what I told Molly. I says, Molly, get a load of Uppy. She's got her cheaters on stilts. <laughs> Things are very distinguished, and of course they are quite de rigueur at the theater. Quite what? <laughs> quite de rigueur. Oh well, don't worry about that. They always fog up when you come into a warm place, my God. <laughs> I sure. Well, when mine do that, I just wipe them off on the side of my pants, and I don't know why you can't do the same. Uh, I says, when are you getting married to Boomer, Uppy? Oh, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to be married in June, Miss McGee. And, oh, oh I'm, such, I am such a happy girl. Just counting the golden days as they slip by. Uh-huh. Oh, it is wonderful to be in love and watch the unfolding of another person's character under the gentle influence of tender emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me Boomer's character is unfolding. <laughs> I'd like to see that. How about even when it's completely unfurled, you could still tuck it in the back of a small wristwatch. <laughs> oh, but really, he has a beautiful character, Mr. McGee. Is that so? Yes, oh, yes. Now, for instance, I discovered him reading a little booklet the other day on the prevention of cruelty to animals. Oh, oh I was so pleased, yes, really. Yes, you were. What was the name of the book, Uppy? Uh, let me see. Um, oh, yes, yes. It was called You Can't Beat the Ponies. <laughs> Just as if anyone would want to beat a dear little pony. <laughs> but you see, Miss McGee, it's just those little things which make me so sure of Horatio. Uh-huh. Or do you think I'm being just a silly girl? <laughs> oh, well, it's so nice to see you, Miss McGee. Goodbye. Good morning. Go on, Abby. You can't beat the ponies. <laughs> Old Uppy may belong to the upper crust, but she's beginning to crumble. <laughs> Boy, are these glasses wonderful. I'll have to hurry in and show them to Molly. Hey, Molly, I done it. Look. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? <laughs> Can you see good through? Well, where's that newspaper I was trying to read this morning? Right where you threw it, careless. Under the chair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, now I can really read it. Boy, is this going to be a pleasure. Oh. Come in. Oh, hello there, Cupid. Oh. Hello, sister. How's every little... Well, for scream sake, Fisher, when are you starting in to be very sp- skeptical? <laughs> Spectacles, Nick. I just got them. Pretty doggy, eh? Yeah. His eyes were getting a little weak, Mr. DePopolis. Yeah. They look nice on him, don't they? Kind of distinguished looking. Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, I was saying to somebody last night that if anybody should be extinguished, it is my friend Fisher. <laughs> You mean distinguished, Nick. Extinguished means to get put out. Well, for once, I guess I know what I'm talking about, then, if I know what you mean. <laughs> ah, but ought to be kidding over on one side, Fizzle. Those skepticals are very be-going to you. Hmm? Be-going? Oh, you mean becoming, Mr. DePopolis. Well, going or coming, you be there the nuts, I'm thinking. <laughs> wait till I show you how I can read with them. Well, speaking of newspapers, Fizzle, the reason now, Wait a I... minute, Nick. Wait, wait till I try these glasses on this small tie. Yes, but... Oh, Fisher, oh. oh McGee, what's the matter? Molly, I, I still can't read. The type still runs all together. Oh, well, you got the wrong glasses then. That read it anyway, and I thought I was all set. Why, look, it even makes me dizzy to look at the headline. But listen, if you're letting me get an edge in words, way... <laughs> well, uh, what is it, Mr. DePopolis? That is the newspaper I'm leaving here by mistake last night. Well, what of it? That's a Greek newspaper. What? <laughs> A Greek newspaper. Heavenly day. Then I don't need glasses on my... Oh, sure. <laughs> we want to extend our congratulations and best wishes to the Johnson Wax people in Racine, Wisconsin, who this week opened their beautiful new office building designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. And it's the most modern and unique building of its kind in the world. Indeed it is. And if you're touring around this summer, folks, why, they'd be glad to have you drop in and look it over. It's well worth a visit. Yeah, and while you're there, if, if you should happen to remember that you need some glow coat or some furniture polish. Maggie. Huh? Oh, good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen.